Now, the new development bank was established in 2014 by the BRICS states, which are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. It aims to mobilize resources for development projects in emerging economies and developing nations, and in many ways serves as an anchor of ties between China and Africa. Well, CGTN's Lindy Mtongana sat down with the Director General of the Africa Regional Office, Mr. Monale Ratsoma. Here are some excerpts. My first question is about the name of this bank, the New Development Bank. It suggests that it approaches development in a different way. So perhaps talk us through how this bank differs from the Bretton Woods institutions and how it innovates around finance and monetary systems. We are a sustainable development institution that brings about new ways of doing things. And that shows very much in our portfolio and our success in a very short space of time. The bank has been operating um, in at least the five member countries for just about six years now, right? And it's got total approved projects of just under 30 billion US dollars in a very short space of time. You can go back in history and measure uh, comparably against what the other institutions have been able to do in a similar time horizon. It doesn't come anywhere near that. How do you balance that need to help Africa develop from an interest, uh, infrastructure perspective, but also ensuring that African countries or South Africa uh, is not burdened by debt? We're not a commercial bank, and a commercial bank's interest, of course, would be to make profit. Mm -hmm. We're not profit-making uh, institutions. So the, the projects that we are financing would have ordinarily uh, been coming through as key priorities for the country. So. If MDBE or the NDB in this case comes through and finds a project maybe that is a priority, a key priority for government. With in any case, those institutions were going to have to borrow money to finance the project. So our offering is that, okay, yes, we will we'll assist you um, and we're going to be cheaper than where you would ordinarily be finding resources to finance the project. The past two years have been particularly difficult due to the pandemic. Um, we've seen a number of African countries seek uh, debt restructuring and relief, including an initiative like the Debt Service Suspension Initiative, which was supported by the World Bank and the G20. Has the NDB um, come up with any such initiatives, even those looking at post-pandemic recovery? In the last two years uh, during COVID, the bank approved $10 billion uh, to support the, the, uh, a response to the, the, early, uh, the early hit on, in terms of the health mm -hmm. impact of COVID. Right? Uh, that would have included financing on helping countries uh, finance the you know, procurement of, uh, or the erection of temporary hospitals, the procurement of PPEs, and all of that. So that was done across, uh, across the, uh, all the member countries. And beyond that, it was understanding very well that, you know, the pandemic was not only up going to be about health emergencies. Beyond the health emergencies, uh, the residual would have been on mostly on the economic impact because many countries have had to impose hard lockdowns. So we've seen business shut down. Uh, we've seen people lose their jobs um, and, 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 and therefore their livelihood. So we also, in the package, added an element of assisting countries through the economic recovery. So it was first reaction on the health, uh, and second, uh, second response was, was on the, on the um, economic recovery, which uh, countries took, uh, took up too. Um, and um, those, those loans are also still you know, performing uh, re reasonably well. The BRICS group of nations, um, beyond focusing on development fi uh, financing, is also a body around that's centered around cooperation. How does the bank itself facilitate then cooperation among member states? I think you know, the bank has represented um, a real first step of the cooperation of BRICS in demonstration of what can be achieved in a new modern era where you know, developing and emerging economies collaborate to produce something, something fresh as an offering in, uh, in, in the market. Right? And, and you, you, you see it in that even in the, in the strategy, we increasingly are, are talking about financing infrastructure that facilitates uh, trade, right? facilitate trade amongst, uh, you know, amongst, the, the, uh, amongst the corporation. So the new chapter where you're opening up for new, uh, new mem mem membership, and if Botswana is interested in joining, or Lesotho, or Zimbabwe, or in Egypt is one of the countries that are recently now also finalizing joining, joining the bank. So it becomes an easier conversation that is about you know, integrating uh, infrastructure integrating regions. 
bid if you're going to finance a rail project from South Africa to Mozambique to so that is, the, that is the infrastructure that is needed in, in Africa, as an example, a continent that is very known for underdevelopment when it comes to infrastructure. And so finally, Mr. Razoma, of course, um, President Xi Jinping, speaking at the BRICS Forum in Durban in 2013, had mentioned that, you know, the bank and BRICS essentially are, are beyond, going, going beyond benefiting economies must also benefit people's well-being. So in what way do you think the bank actually works to do that? It's implied in the mandate. Uh, or is indicated quite explicitly, in fact, in the, in, in the mandate. And when we do projects, we measure projects according to sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goals are going to measure how we're impacting on uh, communities uh, on the ground. So how we're changing uh, people's lives through the projects that we do. Um, and if you look at the portfolio, and even in, in South Africa, that we have, we have finance project in, uh, in energy sector, um, ESCOM has been well documented over the many years for, uh, for its struggles with power supplies. And we have finance projects there to enable that ESCOM, or ability for ESCOM to distribute, uh, produce and distribute uh, energy. Um, we are financing projects in, uh, in the water sector. Um, a project that is fetching water from, from, uh, from Lesotho and bringing water to, to, to Gauteng. Uh, South Africa is a, is a water scarce country, so uh, any project that is facilitates bringing water into into the country can only be any enabling the livelihoods uh, and, and support of communities that will benefit from that water supply. And most importantly, now adding the aspect of you know you know ensuring that you know as in, as I indicated earlier that we finance uh, projects that are climate friendly. Uh, climate friendly projects have got a feedback loop to the livelihood of society in terms of their health. And uh, down the line, of course, then that uh, positively impacting on how the country is not overburdened uh, with, uh, with either diseases of, fo of form that are coming through uh, because of the poor quality of, uh, poor quality of the air. So all of these are interconnected in some way that, uh, in fact, you, know, you can categorize it in very simple, simple language. You say, if the, if the founders of the bank have said, we are setting up a bank, that is going to finance sustainable development is exactly what the president was saying in that, that sustainable development is about making sure that whatever we do, we leave a positive footprint.